Yeah, this little video is about trigonometry. Trigonometry. So, uh, trigonometry is actually something that you encounter all the time, whether you know it or not. Um, anytime a plane flies, they actually use trigonometry to figure out which direction to point the plane. Uh, so, for example, if the wind is like blowing this way, it actually blows the plane off course, so they have to compensate for that, and they do that by using trigonometry. Anytime you see a survey team, I don't know if you've ever seen these guys out here with, uh, they've got like a little scope and they're usually wearing these things, standing in the middle of the road like crazy people. But uh, they're actually, what they're doing is they're measuring the ground in preparation for uh, some kind of construction project. So anytime you see buildings, there was trigonometry involved in trying to figure out the uh, landscape and what they need to do as far as getting ready to build the building. Now, believe it or not, Google Maps and your phone actually have uh, they use trigonometry so <clears throat> right here you see you have Google Maps and how that works is they use trigonometry based on satellite signals that um, get to the device at different times and they use trigonometry to figure out where that device is on the earth so that's that and then the uh, of course the ancient Egyptians used uh, a basic form of trigonometry and right triangles for that and then this is a little project that we might do where can actually use trigonometry to help you measure how big the Earth is. So that's kind of interesting. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, basic trig ratios. So the three basic trigonomic ratios, trigonometric ratios, the first one is called the sine ratio. So all of these ratios have to do with right triangles. There is trigonometry for non-right triangles, but we're not going to get into that in uh, this class. But this is uh, the sine ratio. So let's take a look at the sine ratio. Okay. The sine ratio says that uh, the sine of this angle x equals opposite over hypotenuse. So basically, if you multiply this number x by this thing called sine, then you get the opposite side of the triangle over the hypotenuse. Okay. So another way to write that is sine x equals O over H. And this will become a little bit more clear when we do some actual problems. But the sine ratio you have to know is the sine of angle x equals opposite over hypotenuse. Okay. The next one is the cosine ratio. The cosine of x is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So what I mean by opposite and adjacent is you look at the sine ratio, you see how the side over here is on the other side of the triangle from x? So that's what I mean by opposite. It's over here. It's on the opposite side of the street. It's on the opposite side of the triangle here. And then we know that the hypotenuse is always the hypotenuse. It's always the one that the 90 box is pointing at. Okay, same thing over here. We know adjacent means next to and so the adjacent side is right next to the angle here, and then, of course, our hypotenuse. So cosine of our angle equals adjacent over hypotenuse. And we can also write it as cosine x equals a over h. <clears throat> okay, the next one is a little weird, and it's called the tangent ratio. The tangent ratio. So the tangent ratio says that tangent x equals opposite over adjacent. Okay, so this one doesn't use hypotenuse at all. It uses the opposite side of the triangle over the adjacent side. So essentially, if you know one of these sides and you know the angle measurement here, you can know the length of the other side or the height. So for example, what surveyors will do is if this, uh, this side of the triangle is like a hill, for example, then what you could do is you could actually use this angle measurement right here to figure out how high is the hill if you knew how far away from the hill you were standing. We're going to do a problem similar to that in just a bit. Okay, you can also call this tangent x equals opposite over adjacent. It should be an A. Let me fix that. This is an A right here. Opposite over adjacent. There we go. And we can remember all these 
by this little thing called Sokotoa. 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 There's a little joke involved with this, but it, uh, it's kind of like... Anyways, I'm not going to tell the joke because it's kind of silly. And you, you'll just remember Sokotoa. Maybe in class I'll tell you what the joke is, but um, anyways, Sokotoa. Okay, so how can we use this to actually solve a problem? Let's do some problems. <clears throat> okay, so let's say we have a triangle. Oh, there's one there. And let's say that we know this angle measurement right here is 40 degrees. And then let's say that we know that the hypotenuse of this particular triangle is 4 inches long. And we want to find out how high the triangle is, how tall it is, this side over here. So what we could do then is we could use trigonometry to do this. Okay? We only have one side of the triangle and an angle. We can figure out the other side here. So first of all, we have to identify what sides do we have in relationship to this angle. Let me show you. So we're going to find that missing side length. And first of all, we have to think about this as what we call a reference angle. So a reference angle. And what the reference angle means is that's the angle that we're working from. So when we're talking about whether or not we're going to use sine or cosine or tangent, we have to think about in terms of in reference to this angle or where we are in relationship to this angle. So let me show you. So here we have the 4-inch side and the x side. If we look at this, what we really have is this side here is our opposite side. So I put an O there. And this side of the triangle is the hypotenuse. Yes, the hypotenuse is adjacent to the 40 degree angle, but we're not considering this as either opposite or adjacent. This line right here, this side of the triangle, is always the hypotenuse because it doesn't touch the 90 box. Remember I showed you that thing where the uh, essentially this is a arrow pointing at the hypotenuse. So that arrow makes that um, that makes this the hypotenuse. Okay, so we call this the hypotenuse, not the adjacent. And then this is the opposite side. Okay, so now that we know that we have the hypotenuse and we're looking for the opposite side, we can figure out which of these we can use. So if we use our SOKATOA, we take a look at, well, okay, we have opposite and a hypotenuse here. So we're going to look at which of the three trig ratios has O and H in it. And you can see clearly that we have O and H right here. So we have O and H in our triangle, O and H in SO for SOKOTOA. Okay. So then we set up our ratio. So sine 40 degrees equals X over 4 because we know that sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. So that's exactly what SOKOTOA says. It's sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine adjacent over hypotenuse and tangent opposite over adjacent. So as we're looking at this, we've got sine 40 degrees equals x, our opposite, over 4, our hypotenuse. So it takes a little bit to set these up, but once you set them up, it's really not that difficult. Now all we have to do is solve for x. So let me show you how to do this. If we have 4 on the bottom of a fraction, all we have to do is multiply by 4. So we end up with this. So by multiplying by 4, we get 4 times the sine of 40 degrees, and that's going to equal our x. Pretty simple. How do we figure out what sine 40 degrees is, though? Well, the only way to do it uh, without a tremendous amount of effort is using a calculator. And we happen to have one here. So this one kind of looks like uh, the ones you're using. Um, you can also use calculator-online.com as your calculator. But the way that you do this in, in one of these calculators is you type in this number 40 right here. So we're going to type 40. And then you press this little button right there. It's called sign. And it actually says S-I-N on your calculator. And you type those numbers in and you get a decimal. And that decimal is 0.6428 blah 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 blah. I usually like to round, round to the nearest ten thousandths, so that's four decimal places. I like to use four decimal places because it tends to be pretty accurate. There's no need to use more than that for um, our class, at least. If you're sending astronauts to the moon, you might want to use more decimal places, but for our class, four is fine. Okay. So now we still have four times sine 40, and we know that sine 40 is 
0.6428. So we do 4 times 0.6428 again in our calculator, um, and we get 2.57 inches is equal to x. Pretty, pretty interesting, huh? So all we had was an angle, a side, and a missing side, and we were able to find that missing side using trigonometry. This is an incredibly useful thing, and I'll show you an example soon, and we'll actually do one uh, for real, hopefully this week. All right. Here's a second triangle. Now, I kind of moved this one around. I flipped the triangle around backwards, but we're going to start with this. And we have three feet over here, and that's going to be our side here, and we got 35 degrees there, and then we have a hypotenuse that's unknown. So we're going to try to find this, the length of this hypotenuse, if we have a triangle where uh, this leg here is three feet and we got a 35 degree angle there. Okay. So first of all, we need to realize that that's our reference angle. So if that's our reference angle, then we have our adjacent side. This is going to be adjacent to the angle and x. If our angle was over here, this side would actually be an opposite, but because our angle's there, this is an adjacent side. So in other words, it's right next to the angle. It's sort of like part of the angle right here, if you, if you think about it that way. So one of the rays of the angle makes it adjacent. Okay. So then here, we have our hypotenuse, Okay, because so this is always the hypotenuse. All right, so uh, let's take a look at Sokotoa once again. And we're going to see what we have. So we have adjacent and hypotenuse. So which one do you think we're going to use? We got A and H. So which one of these do we need to use? The middle one, right? And C stands for cosine. So we're going to use the cosine ratio. So we're going to do cosine 35 degrees equals 3, our adjacent, over X. So if you remember Sokatoa, then you will always be able to figure out which ratio to use. And that really is the hard part. This one though is a little bit more tricky because the x is on the bottom. So one way to do that is to multiply both sides by x actually, and that's going to get it off the bottom because it's really annoying to have x on the bottom of a fraction and try to solve for it. So let's multiply both sides by x. And I'm going to show you a shortcut when we're done with this. So if we multiply both sides by x, we get x cosine 35 degrees equals 3. We still haven't solved for x because x is not alone. So what we can do is, because this means multiply, we can actually divide by cosine 35 degrees. So it would look like this. And then that cancels out cosine 35 degrees, and we get x equals 3 over cosine 35. The shortcut is, basically, you can just switch cosine 35 and x, and it works. So you can just switch these two. It's kind of like cross-multiplying and dividing, if you remember solving proportions. But that's kind of a shortcut. You can just switch this and this, and then it works. So uh, if you're solving multiple trig problems at the same time, this is quite helpful information. Okay, so once again, we need to figure out what cosine 35 is. So we have to use our calculator, and we type 35. And then we type the button next to sine, which is cosine. So we get x is equal to 3 over 0.8192. So all I did was type 35 degrees and then hit cosine, and that got me this right here. So x equals 3 over 0.8192. Not too bad. Okay, so if we divide that right there, we end up with x equals 3.66 feet. So all I did was divide 3 by that, and did that on a calculator, and then we get this right here. Okay. So, <clears throat> again, pretty handy. Let's take a look at a little bit more real-world type of problem. Okay. How tall is this tower? This might be a question that a surveyor might want to answer. Right? How tall is that tower? It could be a mountain, it could be a, a hill, but we're going to use this medieval-looking tower just because I found it on Google Images and it looks cool. All right, so first of all, what a surveyor might do is they might set up a triangle, just like this. So this little triangle I set up, and this is kind of, I just kind of made up some numbers here, but this is, gives you the idea. So the triangle is, we, let's say the surveyor was standing right here, and he was standing 200 feet exactly away from the center 
right underneath the tallest part of the tower. Boop, right there. Okay. So he's right there, and he's 200 feet from that spot. Okay. Then he looks through his handy-dandy scope, and it's called a clinometer, and we might be making these soon. And this clinometer tells him that this angle here is 50 degrees. So as he's standing at the point of this triangle, he's looking through this device that tells him that as he's sighting the top of the tower, that is 50 degrees. 50 degrees. And so he figures this out, that this is 50 degrees. Now all he has to do is do a little trigonometry and find the missing height right here. Well, how do we do that? Well, let's take a look at that. Okay, if 50 degrees is our reference angle, then we know that this is our adjacent, and this is our opposite side. Notice that we're not using the hypotenuse at all here. This length, we don't care about how long this is. All we care about is how tall the tower is. So we don't really need to find our hypotenuse. We, I suppose we could if we really wanted to but it's not necessary. Yeah, you want to find out how tall the tower is. So this is 200 feet from here to here, and then the tower is our opposite. Okay, so once again, we're going to use Sokotoa, and we're looking for O and A, because we have the O, the opposite, and A, the adjacent. So which one goes with that? Well, looky here. It's right there. It's the tangent ratio. Right there. Okay, so we're going to set up our problem. <clears throat> Tangent 50 degrees equals the opposite, which is x over 200. Okay, so we have opposite over adjacent, x over 200. And by the way, the two tricky parts about trig ratios are um, figuring out which one to use, which is why I'm having you write O and A and using SOHCAHTOA. And then the second part of it is figuring out which to put over what. Okay, and Toa says it. You do the first one, the first letter, over the second letter. So it's almost like there's a there's a division sign right here. So it's almost like that, right in each one. Oops. So it's almost like that. Let me get rid of this. Okay. Oopsie. <clears throat> okay. So the going to do our uh, little program. Okay, So we're going to multiply both sides times 200. Okay. So we're going to multiply two, both sides by 200 to get rid of this 200 on the bottom. And that gives us 200 times tangent 50 equals x. Pull out our calculator and type in 50 and then hit the tan button for tangent and that gives us a decimal and it's 1.1918 so our problem becomes 200 times 1.1918 that equals x and I'm rounding here I think it was 1.19175 or something like that so I rounded up and I rounded to that fourth decimal place that ten, uh, ten thousandths place okay. so 200 times 1.1918 is 238.35 so that means that this tower supposedly is 238.35 feet tall if we use my made up measurements here. I don't know how tall the real tower is but it didn't say in the picture but uh, that's how tall it would be if these were the measurements here. Okay, good. We're going to practice this quite a bit so you're going to get the hang of it if it's a little confusing but uh, yeah, that's the end of the video.